What's up, guys? Welcome to another Homegrow TV talk show and podcast. Just finished recording, sitting down here with Umami Seed Co. And wow, what a podcast do we have in store today. We dive through everything from tissue culture, synthetic seeds, to their history, new crosses coming up, and ultimate old crosses that uh, we are now currently running in the Lord of the Lemons. But yeah, kick back and get ready for another breeder deep dive, history, and new things coming. Before we jump into this podcast, I want to take a second and thank AC Infinity. AC Infinity are the ones that make all the grow gear that we use here at Home Grow TV. And they have been for a good minute. We've tested everything from the 2x4 to the 4x4 to the 5x5 and we've gotten fire in every single one. I've been a customer of AC Infinity far before they ever sponsored the channel and with good reason. To me, they're a great one-stop shop to be able to get everything grow gear. You see, for me, it all started with the extractor fans, but quickly led to their grow tents, grow kits, and now brand new bar style LED grow lights. So make sure to check out acinfinity.com for everything indoor grow gear. And use coupon code HOMEGROWTV to save yourself a nice chunk of change at checkout. And help support the channel as you do it. Thank you to everybody who has been using that code. Thank you to AC Infinity for sponsoring the podcast. And now it's time to jump into it. Chase, my man, main dog here at Umami Seed Co. What is up? Welcome to the show, brother. How you doing? What's up, G? Man, I'm doing well, bud. Thanks for having me on. Happy to be here. Yeah. Thank you, first of all, for, for making this kind of happen in a way of pulling me aside at MJ and then for joining the Lord of the Lemons. I got a bunch of great questions. And to me, this is a fun podcast because this is a big learning experience for me. I have a lot of genuine questions about your guys' backstory because to me, Umami is new. Um, Umami, I just discovered and stumbled upon you guys last year at the end of the year. So to start everything off, like, what does Umami mean and where does that name come from before we even jump into the backstory? Yeah. Um, so umami is a Japanese term. It's uh, the fifth flavor. The rough translation to English is deliciousness. Ooh. Which I always really liked, you know, like, <clears throat> I mean, it came, it, there's a bunch of an origin story to it, but like the big part was finding terps and flavors that you like can't put your nose on, like can't exactly describe with one word. Like, you know, yes. stuff is like citrusy, like, okay citrusy but like umami is this like complex blend of flavors that creates its own unique flavor which like usually people attribute like savory right but it's just okay. that like mouth-watering like it's almost a feeling as much as a flavor you know like it evokes an emotion right at least wow i love that it almost gives me the vibe too like more of a connoisseur it's not just flavorful but when you dive past just basic flavor or basic things you become you know in this realm of connoisseur that's where we'd stumble upon a term used like umami yeah. in japanese you said yeah that's sick that's really cool dude respect that so what is the come up story of umami i, I did you know my homework from stumbling upon you guys i went to the bottom of instagram i started and just kind of seeing and i noticed I seen the, the, the Japanese writing or some of the designs and that's why I thought, what is you mommy first off, but what is the come up story to get to where you guys are today, which looks like some tasty stuff, bro, and leading with flavor over everything. Yeah. So started growing um black market in Utah originally. Okay. Which was you know, it's where we're from. It's uh, very very illegal. Um it's medical now, which is right. cool. And I've actually got a bunch of strains out there being grown by some uh some medical grow medical growers. So if you're in Utah and you go to a dispensary, you can actually get umami terps, which is cool. Because like Utah loves Utah. And so they were obviously like, You're from Utah? Like let's, you know, let's do the thing. Um so that was super cool. But started growing two thousand and six, you know, when I was in high school and then wow. never stopped. You know, like I just fell in love with it. And I didn't know it was what I was going to do. You know, I was doing sales and all kinds of other stuff. And then eventually I just like quit my job and moved up into the hills and like started growing full term on the mountain and was like, this is it for me, you know? What was that line in the sand moment? How did you know? Like you said, you started growing and was through high school and like you never stopped from there. Was there one thing in specific that you just pulled you in more than anything? Like what was that? Having what to is show it about up, it? Having to show up at a job at like 
8 a.m. on the dot. I just like couldn't get over that. It's like <laughs> I it just you know like I could right. stay until five fifteen, you know. But if I showed up at eight fifteen, it was like you know I committed murder. And you're like this is this is just dumb. Like I I didn't you know I didn't jive with it. And uh, so I liked the freedom that it offered. I liked being outside. You know I liked being on the mountain. Um, yeah, there's just like I mean you I don't know there's something about it like sitting on. You know, sitting, smoking a joint, looking at the, you know, the leaf blowing in the wind against blue sky and green earth. Right. Like, it's just it's magic. It's, yeah, it's magic. Magic. So at what point in that whole journey from starting, you know, and, and moving out and doing that, did umami become a thing or that term or that brand? Or when did that whole story start to take shape? Um. So, yeah, like probably, I mean, when I was on the hill, like we were doing a little bit of breeding um and coming up with you know different flavor releases and like trying to have different varieties right because if you're going to dispensaries trying to sell your wares you don't want the same stuff everybody else has so during that like breeding process and making new varieties and really we're just like crossing like whatever you know to try to find something cool um nothing super intentional but i started come you know i was calling stuff umami terps because in my head mm. i was like this has got that that mix of flavors that like you can't quite put your thumb on, you know, it's unique, it's different, it's it's fun. And so like eventually, you know, I I knew I wanted to do seeds and like I wanted to be a breeder. Like I thought that was the coolest fucking thing ever. You know, you're, sick. you're like creating your own variety and then like, you know, putting right. a stamp on it and everything. And I was just like, that's dope. Like that's super cool. Let's totally do that. And then when I was coming up with the name for the brand and like I mean, all successful brands, at least in my mind, have an ethos behind them, you know, which you can always like go back to when you're lost, you know, or if you don't have direction on where to go next, like are the pillar of umami is flavor over everything. So like that was the ethos was flavor. And so umami seed company just made too much sense, you know, and then, wow. you know, elegant, clean, minimalism you let the product speak for itself. You know, like we don't spend money on marketing. I mean, at least not really, you know, our, our time, right. Is our, yeah. our marketing budget. Um, but it's all word of mouth, you know? And so that's really how we've been, we've been growing. And, you know, we have a lot of evangelists that just love Umami and they speak very highly of us. And it's, you know, a testament to what we do and, you know, why we do it. That's sick, bro. I'm really excited to have my first dive through. I got some questions later up. We're going to be talking about the, the Lime Sai, which we have in the Lord of the Lemon series as being the first from Umami Seed. So you might have said it, and I, I might have missed it really quick, but when was the, the official start date to you making those first crosses? Like how long have you re realistically been breeding and crossing your own flavors? Probably 20... I mean, I, the, the first cross I ever did was on accident, which was the first girl I ever did. So that was like 2006, 2007. Um, wow. Okay. And then I started like intentionally making hybrids probably 2010, 2011. Wow. Um, no way. And then we built the library. And I didn't want to like start a company without having a library that I was really proud of and stuff that I had done, you know, and had intention. And so then right. the release, like the, you know, initial umami conception was like end of 16, beginning of 17. No doubt. Wow, what a beautiful journey. And and I'm glad that you touched on that because I like I said, going to your Instagram, I see you guys were already posting like some initial cross or different things that you were doing like back in two thousand fifteen, but you had already been working for years and years before even making your first post on Instagram in two thousand fifteen, was it? Or yeah. so No doubt. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, how did that lead into what, you know, if we go to your Instagram now and we look at certain things, I something really jumped out to me and that was your guys are where it seems to be like a current focus with the in-house tissue culture and what i have no clue about bro i've never even heard about before synthetic seeds can we touch a little bit on both of those you can you know maybe even separate them if you want to but the tissue culture and synthetic seeds you guys are doing what is going on there yeah so we started goofing around with tc back in 2015 i think okay. the first video i ever posted um is like I think in what year sorry 2000 
2015. In 2015? Yeah. Wow. Or Whoa. 16, somewhere in there. But if, okay. you, if you scroll to the very beginning of my Instagram, there's like a video of me in a sink, like rinsing plants, you know, um, and right. like prep washing okay. plants. So I always thought it was cool just because like I'm a fucking nerd. I like science, like, you know, anything to like nerd out and do R and D and, you know, try new stuff is, is fun and cool. So, yeah, you know, before, and this was way before like viroid uh, for me, a big key was like, how do I reduce my library down? Because like, I've got every room in these houses full to the ceiling. Like we're doing quad right. stack racks and it's just like, I've got hundreds of different moms and like, how do we make that a little bit more manageable? Um, right. And then how can we do like long-term storage of stuff like that? I'm, I'm not going to grow for months and months and months or years because I'm the only one that I know who has it. And I'm not willing to like give this up because one, I could be the last person that has the cut, you know, and I don't want to be right. the person that causes that variety to go extinct. You know, I'm the steward of the plants, right? I'm the fucking, I'm the curator. So, right. So that was the like, initial push and then you know having sterile plants like sterile and but what i mean by that is like no microbiological life you know no bugs no pathogens which is like yeah duh we should totally do that and so no way so we, we like did you, you know, feel ahead of your it. time kind of not really you know like tc like general tissue culture was like like the, the idea was thought of in like 1890 and like the first time they ever did it was like the early 1900s and so it's like i mean you know the technology is like 120 years old at this point you know it's like if wow. they could do it back then like we got the internet you know like there's no way and everyone can't figure this shit out like right now and it's not terribly difficult you know it's it's kind of monotonous and you just have to I mean, like anything, you just have to like learn to love the process. Um, gotcha. But it's so fucking worth it. It's so valuable. Like, and it's really fun. You know, like once you start wow. to see, just like growing, right? Like, you know, cloning is not the most fun thing in the world. But like once you see those clones start to pop roots and like you see those plants start to grow, like you start to love the whole thing. Um, so it's it's fun. It's like there's a lot of cool different things you can do with it. You know, there's like a bunch of different varieties of uh, cannabis that I've done that you can like tweak in vitro with like different hormones and chemicals. And like you can, there's a stuff called semi-clonal variation and like, you know, genetic shifting that can occur in the tubes where you can like okay. turn on and off genes. Right. So it's not genetic modification. You're just like shifting the phenotypical expression from the genotype. So you can like re-pheno hunt the same plant. Whoa. Oh my God, dude. That is the first to me. And I think I've been explaining this before, but never in such simple terms where I could understand what you just said there, like re pheno hunting a plant. And it's so interesting to, to see that you seen this as a solution to something that I feel like I'm almost going through right now. And maybe many tuned into this show. You're always going to have these winners that you're slowly going to find, depending on how picky you are over the years, right? You're going to keep your little bank. There's going to become a point. It's inevitable that that bank is full. You're overflown. And now I'm like, dude, I have these nine moms. I don't really have plans to run them yet i still want to keep hunting what do i do for space and i've been thinking and looking in this direction i'm so glad you brought that up that that is what you looked at as a solution what are your overall thoughts for people getting into it as a home grower is it way over their head is it not necessary is this something that should be kept just for the breeders or is this something that as home growers as well it could be something that we look to in the future i mean it's definitely like it, it depends on what your pain tolerance is <laughs> And what I mean by that is, like, how much money you want to spend and how much time you want to invest. Like, if you're just running a tent and you're running seeds and, like, you've got a few varieties that you really, really like, it, you know, as long as they're continually healthy, it it probably makes the most sense to just, and we're talking, like, over five five years, right? Just as an easy, like, we're going to keep this mom on the back burner and we're just going to clone her off and, and keep running her. Um, maybe... You know, maybe that's something to consider. Like, you can do tissue culture in, a, like, a storage bin tipped on its side, you know, with, like, some film, like, some, you know, uh, plastic film over the front. And you, like, you know, spray it with alcohol and spray your hands. And, like, it's called, like, a still air box. And then you can do, like, tissue culture in that kind of environment. Um, or you can build something 
you know, relatively cheap. But if you want to do like a professional setup, you know, you're talking thousands of dollars. Wow. So like, for example, I seen at MJ BizCon actually, where we met for the first time from Athena, they had like this little hood kit or something. It yeah. looked to be like a solution in that. Is that dope. something? Yeah. yeah my, okay. my homie actually designed and built that. Uh, Mike Hydro. No doubt. Yeah. He's That's like one of my it. best friends. I've known him for a long, long time. Um, and like, yeah, those are, if you got the, if you got the cash, those things are great. You know, it's like an all in one right. little box. Like, it's, you know, it's a good place to start if you're not going to build something yourself. All right, cool. So, and then one last question before we move on from this, because I do want to talk about synthetic seed and give me a breakdown on this, but like, what would be a good place to start for those who do want to know more? Maybe like myself, I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready to jump into that yet or dive into it, but like, I want to know a little bit more. I want to see like how you got started at the beginning, where you learned from. What is a good place nowadays to maybe dip your toe in a little bit in that information world of tissue culture? Yeah, so... I mean, that's something that we've been working on. We're doing a whole series of YouTube videos on nice. TC, which perfect. they're not available yet. Like, you can okay. go look. We've got a bunch of shorts and stuff on online. Um, but we will have a bunch more content coming out that's, like, cannabis-specific. Um, I mean, there's so many really good YouTube videos on tissue culture. And, like, like all tutorials, the very best ones are some guy with a super thick East Indian accent, you know, right. who is going through, at, like, information that is... People charge you tens of thousands of dollars. These guys are just like, hey, here's how I do it. And do, 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 do. And like, yeah, the language barrier can kind of be tricky. But, you know, it's it's well worth your time to watch those. At least get like a sense of like what the process is like. So if you're like, yeah. okay, this seems fun. And if, if you have any sort of lab training, you know, or have worked, if you've ever done mushroom culture or anything like that, like aseptic practices are pretty universal. Um, right. So it's not like, I mean, it's not rocket science. But it's super okay. cool. Like you can go from like, so let's say we start here, right? Which this is a meristem culture. And like, you'll notice you can't see anything because the meristem is like a one millimeter by one millimeter transparent, like cluster of cells inside of a node. It's like dissected node. So you start like okay. there and then eventually you'll end up with something that looks like that. Yep. Or it like right. starts to grow. Okay. And then... You know, you can plug those into, like, I use pop tops. And right. so then it starts yeah. to, like, you know, you start to see branching and, you know, and then all of a sudden you go from one plant to this. And then this can transform into something like that. <laughs> I've got, like, 25 or 30 of these guys in here. And right. these will grow for, like, a couple months and they'll max out the tube. And then, like, I mean, essentially you go from, like, 1 to 10 to 100 like a thousand to ten like the, the numbers explode like it's so fast once you right. get like it takes a couple months to get them like to this stage but once you have them in this stage you can crank out like that's why tc wow. labs are like small and they're like yeah we do like 30 million a month and you're like how oh on earth God. can they do that many cuts and it's like this is how because you can just like and you can stack i mean think about how many of these you can stack on a four by eight rack right so it's like i can put um, in the space of like 50 clones I can have like 500 plants wow. and then that 500 then, plants times, you know, 10 per, cause you, you know, you, these are like moms effectively. Yep. So you just chop these up and then you've got one tube. Now you've got 10 or 20 of these. Unreal. And in doing so in that process that you just explained, which is mind blowing guys throw down for that in the comments. Cause I don't know what you, but I definitely just became a little bit more enlightened off that. But just to confirm, in that process and doing so, would you have cleaned that genetic as well of any of its diseases, pathogens, and, and such in that new process, like from that original? Uh, it depends. Um, if that is your intention, there's a specific method that you're going to need to do in order to ensure the success of that, you know, plan. Okay. So, like, when you do for just the easiest one is, like, hop latent remediation. Right. Right. Um, so the reason you can remediate hop latent, and this isn't, you know, a perfect system here. If you're going to do this, you're going to need to take like 50, you know, meristem cultures and then hope, you know, several of those are clean because like the okay. viral cells, like there's, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a video or like a photo after this, you could like put up, but, um, it'll show the viral cells like in the, um, leaf set around. So like the meristem is like here. And the leaves yeah. are like around here, and these will be like fully infected. 
and the yeah. meristem is not. And so you're going to like need to remove those and then like excise the meristem without like contaminating your tool. And like, yeah. you can't see the virus, right? The only reason you can see it in this instance is like it's been dyed and then like cross sectioned and microscoped. So like at least you have like a God. visual understanding of like where or what that is. Um, but taking, you know, you're, you're chasing out the virus. So you're taking the freshest, youngest, healthiest cells and you're replicating those. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. Cause that was a simple answer. I was looking like, does yeah, every so, time we do tissue culture, I thought we were always cleaning it. I still have so much to learn. About. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So but what like, about this whole thing? Fusarium, like any of that stuff that's like in the, you know, in the circulatory yeah. system, you're trying to take, cause it'll infect the older tissue. So you're trying to take the youngest tissue that's not infected and then do that. So it's not necessarily just that new growth that would have come out the top your tissue. Oh, now we got I mean, everything. It can that be, it. you know, right. can be. It's, it's okay. not necessarily. You have to, right. like, you have to test. And if you have clean genetics, and then you can tissue culture those and know that they're going to be clean because you're not, right. you know, there's no worry. So it's not like you're going to have to go through the, I mean, meristem culture for me takes like a year. Wow. Like it's not, so, you know, it's not fast. What about this whole synthetic seed thing? How deep does this whole wormhole go? And what is this, dude, that you guys are doing with synthetic seed? Like, I didn't so, know that even existed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, synthetic seeds are basically just a really tiny version of tissue culture, like self-contained. Okay. Like nodes, effectively. So you're you're taking a node and you're encapsulating it in a a gel, which is a, effectively the same media as this like the the sugars um and the hormones okay. and you know they don't have a really good success rate they germinate at like 20 percent, 20 to 30 percent um which mostly is just due to the quality of the the node so if you took if you spent a ton of time and took really 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 high quality um explants you could probably bump that number up a little bit but it, it doesn't take long to like make a ton of these but it's an okay. easy way for storage you can keep them in the fridge for like a year. Um, oh, and I mean they they look super cool, you know. So it's like right, but like genetic transfer you. from one place to another. Like if I want to move germplasm, um, yeah, that's an easy way to do it. Because like shipping I mean, this gel is like it's not super hard, and so like okay. if this gets jumbled around, these will fall. So I right. mean, shit, here's a perfect example. I dropped this walking over okay. here. Yeah. So like it fell out of the gel. Which oh, now, shoot. after this, I have to go chop this up, and I'm going to put it into one of these. But um, And right. it needed to anyway. That's why this was a good example. But, like, you can't ship this. I mean, Got you could, you. but, like, the odds are it's going to fucking, you know, it's not very, like, structurally stable. Um, no but way. those are, because those are, like, beads, and they're, like, pretty hard. You know, it's like a gel blaster kind of texture, like... That's amazing. So this is a solution to preserve even longer if you would want to to be able to start a tissue culture project down the road, not necessarily now, and potentially even be able to have an easy way of transportation or moving these from, from one place to the other. Is that kind yep. of like a decent summary for what this is? Yep. Oh, that's sick. Okay, dude. I'm so glad we went into that because I seen this post, right, live, and since I've been following you guys, and I was like, Synthetic Seed Sunday. If you're going to call yourself a seed maker, you should know how to make all different sorts of seed. Knowledge is power. And I'm like, oh, wow, dude. I was like, I have no knowledge here. I have no power of what's going on over this situation. But you really broke it down, made it simple. Um, and it's just unbelievable. I haven't really spoke to many breeders that are doing this in, in so much of their practices with what they're doing. So props to you guys for being that um, that kind of leading and cutting cutting edge. Yeah, One of the know, things that I don't know anyone else is doing it. I'm sure there are, but I haven't I haven't seen them. So with more this people type make of control, synthetic seeds because they're cool. Do you think that this will become more of something that breeders do as as it becomes more available or the knowledge becomes more more open? Uh, I think it'll become it'll become relatively more common, but it is like a you know. I mean, it's a higher level type of thing that like I was about to say a that, lot of yeah. people are just going to farm this stuff out, which there's nothing right. wrong with that. You know, like if you have a friend or you have like a company and you want to spend the money and have them do the TC work for you, like there's no harm in that. Um, but right. I'm like, you know, we like to do everything in house, like at like 99.9% .9 of what we do is in house. Um, yeah. And so that was obviously a big piece of, you know, just the, the integrity of the brand and being like, look we control end to end. Like there is no, 
middle party, middle man that could like screw up something, you know, like what, what you say is what you get. And like, you know, we, that's, that's how I feel confident putting my name, you know, on every box and like stamping everything. Like that's handmade, hand grown, hand done in house by me, you know, by the team. Like that's how we do it. Heck yeah, dude. Respect to that. One thing I didn't have this, this written down, but it kind of came up as we were just talking about, you know, all these different disease and different things that are out and it had kind of stemmed on youtube i'd seen over the last year a lot of talk about you know people testing their genetics and their seeds do you guys do any testing uh for your guys's stuff against the yeah hlv oh, yeah. okay yeah. can yeah, you go into test. that just a little bit yeah so i mean we test the mother stock um usually once a month or so um oh wow but like if you have a i mean we have a closed system so once i mean it's very difficult for a pathogen to get en to enter into a closed system just due to the way that it's structured. Um, but we have like really rigorous SOPs where even though we're in a clean and closed system, we've got, you, you know, you're cleaning all your tools constantly, like nothing's sh sharing. There's no cross contamination between plants, you know, like you're washing your hands between moms, like there's no plant to plant uh, contamination. Um, and then when we bring in new genetics, they immediately go, they get tested and then they go into TC. And then like, you know, as long as we've got, it takes like six months before like a clone that I get enters into the general population. And even once it enters into gen pop, it's still the same SOPs of like clean, 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 clean. Um, wow. And then That's just, awesome. you know, for everybody's comfortability, we test, they said, we test the inventory, we test the mom stock, we test new stuff. We test the seeds as well. Um, because there's no literature on cannabis seeds transmitting hop latent, but there is right. literature on hop seeds transmitting it at like six to eight percent. So right. it's, you know, it's reasonable to assume given, you know, the familial relationship between cannabis and hops that it's relatively similar. Heck yeah, perfect. Thanks for clearing that out because I know it's definitely as I tune in more online and listen to the educational content, it's something that comes up a lot. We get it asked a lot, so I'm, I'm stoked to hear you guys do it and to hear the time it takes for you guys to even work with certain genetics. That's also something we don't hear very often, or at least not from all breeders, right? A lot of people are rushing to market. A lot of people are grabbing stuff and going right away, so respect to you guys for taking that time and putting those processes in. I think that's definitely something that should be built into the SOPs of all breeders, man. That is beautiful. So talk to me a little bit about breeding for solventless extraction. I'm a big fan of solventless here in Colombia. It's a huge scene, and I feel like there's a strong community kind of building around, you know, hash online right now and everything that's happening. Not many people talk about breeding specifically just for solventless. So are you guys doing it? What does that look like? What do you got going on with the breeding for solventless extraction category? Sure. So, I mean, that became, you know, it was very apparent that that was going to become like, really important right as the vape scare happened and like the shift from bho and like the price of bho crashing and you know everything will wash well with solvent like it's just how it works like everything is going to do really well um although you know i'd been making water hash for a long long time and it was very clear that not everything washes well um there's a specific structure you know head structure density cuticle size like there's there's a million reasons why um, you need stuff to wash well. And so breeding for flavor, we sort of inadvertently bred for bigger trichomes to house more of those flavor chemicals, which again, people, we talk about terps as like a catch all, right? But that's only one part of the flavor equation. There's esters, there's aldehydes, there's these sulfur compounds, there's a ton of other things that like labs don't test for. And I mean, there's, there's terps that you can smell like a gallon of these terps and it smells like nothing right or like one drop will clear a room so the whole like oh this is five percent terps but like this is one percent and this is louder than the five percent like why is that and like well not all terps right. are like smelly um so breeding for flavor inadvertently we bred for bigger trichome heads which ultimately you know results in like typically larger wash yields um and higher cannabinoid levels which is great so shifting the focus to making sure that all of the feminized everything we reverse is a really good washer helps to ensure that like even if we have stuff that's pretty good at washing yeah you know that's going to receive pollen um the progeny on that will there will be at least a decent percentage of those that will lend towards 
the pollen donor and will wash well, which oh, no one's awesome. complaining, even if they don't make water hash, you know, like, yep. it's just, it, it makes the most sense to err on that side. And then That's... doing test washing, you know, like, I mean, I use, we use an orbital shaker to like wash the, the plants for tissue culture. So I use yep. the same orbital shaker with a bunch of mason jars and like, I don't have to sit there and shake the mason jar. I just like put it on, hit the timer, let it run, you know, check the, check the dump. And then like, I run it through a couple filters and then I weigh the filter and I get like a rough, it's really easy to get a quick rough estimate on how okay. they're going to wash. So what's, what do you put into your test wash? Because that's something here on the channel we've, got a lot of blowback for you know we've done full indoor runs of like oh my whole 20 batch went into washing without ever even doing a sample wash to me i was like this Nuts. is my sample wash so yeah. what what is your standard process for like how much do you grab um for your standard test so e easy math like i 10 grams 10 fresh okay. grams um a lot of people like the wash numbers are kind of skewed because if you take a plant that's like fully hydrated versus a plant that's like really dry, the water content of that is gonna be vastly different. The plant is mostly right. water weight anyway, so like those numbers will get skewed. So the only way I found to have like a consistent metric is to have fully hydrated plants, like fully hydrated. Um, and then we'll take 10 grams, I'll manicure it to the same level that I would plan to manicure everything else. Right. Okay. So I'm taking flour. I'm, you know, usually like sugar leaves. I'm cutting off the edges, right. Kind of rounding them off. Cause like, I want all those trichomes. Um, and then you get like a good representative sample of what your, uh, full wash is going to look like. Cause you don't want to wash like a bunch of nugs and then have like a ton of stem and like big water leaf. that's going to like skew your numbers. Um, so 10 grams with ice and water. I soak it for 20 minutes, put it on the shaker wash it for 10 and then I'll like put it, put it really low on the shaker. And so it just kind of like slightly agitates it. So I'm hoping to get any of those heads that were like trapped in the ice or whatever, um, bring yeah. those down to the bottom. And then I run like a separation filter. Okay. So like that's really easy to pour off all the heads that have been on the bottom of your, you know, bottom of your material, run it through a filter, like weigh the filter ahead of time, you know, fully mm. dry pour through yep. the filter which i usually just use like a 160 and then like a coffee filter or like a 160 and a 40 you know okay. or a 37 or somewhere like that and then you'll take your you know your heads that are done dry those and then weigh it and you can you know pretty easily see like wow. oh this one washed at four percent this one washed at five this one you know which it's not perfect no, not. by any means yep. but at least you know like if it's like one two percent it might not be worth it to wash that crop but if it's like right. four, five, six percent, now we're starting to be like, yeah, this starts to make wow. a lot of sense. So is that what you guys are finding percent wise on some of your winners that you guys have been breeding for, specifically for solventless? Are you guys finding those four or five up to yeah. six percenters? Four or five, six. Wow. I mean, shit. Like some of the Momochi and Zellos are washing at like seven and a half, which is nuts. Um, but the other thing to consider is like it's net weight. Like just right. because you have like a really small dinky plant that washes at eight. Versus mm -hmm. like a monster that washes it like four, right? True. What's your, the, the true metric is grams of hash per square foot per day. Oh, love that. <sighs> you know? See, whoa, I never thought about it like that, bro. Of course. Or gra totally grams right. per cubic foot, if we're going to be yeah, like cause... real. Yeah, you're right. Of course. Yeah, we can't just have like a good high washer that doesn't produce much. You got to find those numbers and that... Oh, I love that, bro, that you guys are doing that. Um, I would definitely love to down the road. I want to dive into some of the genetics that you guys have here that I have some in front of me, find out some of the background on these, some of the stuff that's in there. But I do want to hear about some new stuff coming, things that maybe I should test. And because we're on the topic right now, what are some off the top of your head made for this solventless extraction, uh, solventless lovers? Um, so like recent releases that are washing super well. Um, I mean, basically the, the Swish reversal and okay. the Zoda reversal were both selected because they both wash between like four and 5%. Um, oh, wow. So pretty much anything from those lines will perform really well in the wash. Um, standouts are Zello. Is this the Zoda line here? Sorry to cut you. I just wanted to see if this was the right, like I see in your yeah. guys' Discord, you guys got Zoda crosses. So yep. stuff. Yeah, anything, the in there. anything in there. Wow. Oh, my God, dude. And like, 
This is to showstopper beauties too. And this stuff you're saying is also returning and washing amazingly. Yep. Yeah, really, really wow. well. Um, yeah, like Momochi, Zello, Senpai. Um, yeah, I mean, any of those wash super well. I'm trying to see what else is like in stock. So that the, one of the big things we do, right, is single batch only. Okay. Where we release a variety with one batch and then it, when it's gone, it's it's gone. We don't remake anything. There's way too much stuff to work on. Um, I to, like, appreciate that, stuff. Dude. And there's plenty of people that remake gear all day, every day, forever, and that's that's great and that's fine. But, you know, I, I want people, like, who have something dope from us, it's special. Like, it means that much more because, like, they're not that. on deck. And, like, we've had seeds resell, at, you know, that was, like, a, this pack of Zoda sold for, like, $5,000 at auction. You know, no which, doubt, really. Yeah, which is like dope, wow. you know, like it's so And see, cool. like that wasn't your guys' making, right? Because I hear these stories and that stuff. That wasn't you guys putting up for auction for that much. That no, just that was just a third from party the market. on an auction site and like Whoa. someone sent me a link and they were like, Zoda's selling for like a couple grand right now. And then like I was at dinner <laughs> with some friends and then like at the end of dinner I looked and it had sold. And everyone was like, What what are you looking at? And I was like, dude, these seeds just sold for like five grand. Like, holy shit. Like <laughs> Oh That's my so god, cool. Zoda in the house, dude. Like just yeah, hearing those uh, stories, right? Like you can't help to be a little bit more curious about the strain when you know it went for that much. But I appreciate it and I get it when you guys say you're, you're doing batches like this. Um, that's great. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sunny Z. It's got some really good wash finos in there too. Um, okay. And then up upcoming ones that are going to wash well, Kimono is one of the new ones we're doing with uh, Sugar. Sugar seeds that drops oh, spanibus. Um, oh heck yeah, bro! We'll see you at spanibus. You be there? Yeah, uh, I, I'm hoping to be there. Okay, I'm, let's I'm be there, like, bro. Let's I'm do really it. I'm really working I'm... hard to be there. Uh, okay, yeah, it'll be my first but... spanibus, so maybe we'll get an in person, you know, update on uh, on how our our lemon right, size or our veggie and book, stuff. Book tickets here after this. Um, there come we out go, for dude. A couple days. Heck yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, bar, bar's is fun, man. Yeah, I haven't done a Spanibus yet, so I'm excited for it. Uh, I've done Spain before, but never as a cannabis enthusiast, bro. So I'm going to be going for a whole new experience. I got your Instagram pulled up here as well, and obviously, you know, I know one of the questions we're going to be covering, where's the best place to follow you guys? I just wanted to show this right now because I felt, um, you know, I just felt, how do I, I'm thinking in Spanish, like infatuated with the quality that I was seeing, right? And then the more I investigate, every page I kind of open up and peel, oh wait, you guys are actually breeding for these specific reasons? You guys are doing what? You guys are flavor over everything? You guys are doing tissue culture and all this stuff? So it is impressive, it's really cool. I'm gonna make sure we have all this stuff linked down below. This is gonna be a really, oh look, Cherry Zoda right here, dude. What yeah. is this? Is this one of the dispos? Uh, yeah, so that's up in Victoria, BC. That's a uh, Victoria Ooh. Cannabis Company. So I flew up there uh, a couple weeks ago and went and they were just harvesting um, they were doing a pheno hunt of a couple of my varieties, and so I went Jesus. and checked out, you know, a bunch of my flavors in person, and got to meet the team. And if you have the chance to buy any of their product up in Canada, they're they have they're dropping everywhere in like Ottawa and Vancouver. I mean, uh, and BC. Um, That's these guys here. Yeah, yeah, they're they're salt of the earth. They're like the coolest fucking dudes. They were super That's nice. Sick. Like, you know, couldn't have been happier to invite me and the wife in there. And I've got a. I, I took a bunch of video of like the the thing, so eventually I'll chop it up into a YouTube video and make nice. something cool. Um, but a bunch more collabs coming on that. Yeah, we'll make sure, yeah, guys, keep in touch with this because I'm excited to hear more and see more. Again, whether it's even long-form content of you diving deeper into tissue culture, things that us home growers are able to, you know, pick your brain and see a little bit of this, this amazing, obviously passion-driven thing that you're doing here, um, but clearly a big solution, I think, to I think a lot of people that are gonna be watching and, and tuned into this to stay on the the genetic side of things because it's so easy to lose myself bro here on your Instagram just in awe um, and this here is, is Vicanco so shout out to them for running the that strain bro but these ones here um, so I, I got a few and the the lemon Sai. before we get to these is there any others that you want to talk about new up-and-comers new things that are dropping and launching that people should keep their eyes out for yeah um so yeah i so said the next two drops that we have that are going to be big are is kimono uh with sugar seeds at spanibus um and then we've got a new one with my homie uh brad from raw genetics um oh heck Gyoza, yeah which Don't, is a g-code 
cross to Zoda, which is oh. the fucking meanest plant. Like, G, G code is like one of the fucking gnarliest yielders, like big, big, big. And Zoda yields fat as well. So it's just Heck like yes. super purple, giant spears, dripping in terps, funky, like creamy, like, yeah. Um, and like, I mean, Brad's one of the fucking coolest dudes there ever was. He's the nicest guy you ever meet. Um, so, you know, always happy Hell to yes. collab with, with good, good people. Oh, that's sick, bro. I'm so excited to hear that. I will definitely be keeping my eyes open um, to when that drop is and when that's coming. That would be one I would love to run. I've, I've had Raw Genetics been blessed with to run one or two different things from them. Uh, we tried their burnt toast years ago. It was the only one strain that I had. One plant I took to two cups, and it took first place back to back. And I was like killer bro and i wasn't i didn't preserve it man and we let it go i remember the day we let it go you know and i, I kicked myself in the ass for it but i like it because i know i have the excuse to want to dive back through so shout out to you brad from from raw genetics and what a sick collab that you guys have coming with that one bro yeah super excited um yeah i mean it's it's mean like and it's been ready for a minute and you know let's say we it takes like a year and a half to get all this stuff prepped and ready like right now we're making seeds that are going to be dropping and you know 25 26 um so there's a lot of intention behind it and it was like you know i finally i hit brad up and i was like hey so uh these g-code zodas like banged like we got to come up with a name like let's go and i sent him a bunch of photos he's you know he's stoked on it and so it's uh good work yeah. boys yeah. heck yeah. yeah good work and i love to hear that it takes that long to get it out to market because the more i learn i feel like that's the way it should be right you're releasing something that you you believe in you've tested you trusted and you like so Starting with this one here, bro, because I know this one isn't a new drop, is it? This, no, that's, le, this Lime that's OG. That's classic. So I love that, bro, because I think we move on very quickly in now day and age. We move from strain to strain and run back and back. And when you guys were proud to throw this in the Lord of the Lemons, um, it got me stoked to hear that you guys are willing to stand on something that you know you've put out from you know a while ago. Tell me the story. I'll, I'll let you fill me in on this this Lime Sai and let me know. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah, yeah, Lime, lime Sai, Lime Sai. You know, yeah, it's like because awesome. it's an Asai gelato cross, so it just made sense. Asai. Um, but yeah, so that was our first. The key limeade was our first uh, public femme release, which okay. is the burning bush key lime pie cross to the yep. sunset sherb. Um, and if anyone's ever had that key lime pie, you know it's just got this like crunchy key lime turp. Like it's, I mean, you know, it, it's so key lime. Like, the, I mean, if you've had lime and you've had key lime, you know what I'm talking about. Like, it's just that wow. super unique, soapy. It's kind of like Skittlesy a little bit. Like, it's it's okay. fire. Um, so, and Sunset Sherb is one of my all-time favorite strains. Like, I've been smoking that as long as it's been around, you know, or available to me. Like, I used to go up to the bay and get packs of it. Like, it's so fire. Um, wow. So, obviously, that was like a duh moment. Um and then Asai is a big yield there. It's got great structure. So we made that cross and they, I mean, they're just, they're so good. And that one got super slept on. Like people didn't really like, I don't know. Sometimes it's the name. Sometimes it's like the promo or like how, yeah. you know, how it goes. And I mean, it's just like, that's one of the, the all time sleepers that, I mean, eventually, cause I, I think I sold all of them to Neptune. I probably saved like five or 10 packs. And then wow. after I, I'd grown them out like two or three times. And then like I grew out another pack like a year or two later just to make sure the germination rate was still doing well because they were just, you know, chilling. Um, and I found a couple of phenos out of like six seeds that were just bomb fire. And so like the next day I went to Neptune and I was like, I'm taking all of these back. And so I took <laughs> like every single pack back. Right. And it's in and like one of those packs that I, those packs I sent you are from that batch. Wow. Dude. That I went and like that... harvested again and was like, nope. These are two fire. Like I'm keeping these for a rainy day. That's sick. That's gonna be a fun experience for you then to be able to see a kind of community hunt with all of us with Basin. Shout out to you, brother. Hi again. Everyone kind of diving through and taking our first jump through. You want we all together? Um, and shout out for the wax steel, by the way, bro. That is something I've never seen. Yeah, and that's that was back when the wax was. We were using the like. The, the little pot and the heat thing and like the colors right. were kind of, you know, cause they get mixed together and I couldn't always get the exact same. This is new version. This is. Yeah. So you see the new, you know, the new stamp, right. Versus the old, right. The old one. Yeah. And now I bought, you, it... you know, a mountain of that exact red. <laughs> so you guys actually seal these by hand and this is oh, yeah. real wax on here. Yeah. Yeah. Every single one. I looked That's... at getting the sticker 
Like they make yeah. like a wax, like a fake wax seal. Um, okay. Which I was like, this will make it way faster, and it still looks really good, or whatever. And they're they're all slightly imperfect, and I was like, no one's gonna know. And then I ran the math, and like they're more expensive than stamping them wow. by hand. No way, that's yeah. sick, dude. And, and so way I was more kind of like, yeah, I was already kind of like reticent about doing that because it's like, yeah, it's not as authentic. And then as soon as it was like, it's more expensive. You're like, no, we'll just keep doing oh. it the old fashioned way. But now I have a glue gun. That you like, do, 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 do. You okay, know, you, can, you can rip through them pretty quick. Okay, because I'm picturing some medieval times where I'm such a Lord of the Rings fan, and I'm picturing you guys like in this like candle lit room. That's and, what. That's like, how it started. That's amazing. That's how it started. It was a little like yeah. dish with like a. Uh, <laughs> A tea candle underneath it, and like you're right. It was uh, that's it beautiful. Was so dumb, and it was so messy, and like soot everywhere, and it was just yeah, it was a nightmare. And you it's get that OG, soot on your hand, and then you get it on the box, and it's like you know, hundreds of boxes got thrown away because they just got dirty. Or something, you know, <laughs> like, we're learning. Total OG, no, really, really cool, bro. As you seen on the live, thanks for tuning in. By the way, by the, on uh, on the live, that was yesterday. super fun, dude. That was cracking. <laughs> Yeah, Heigen was stoked, dude. Basin was stoked. I was one way. This was like immediately, right? You seen this was so the first one we popped yesterday when we asked, like, "Hey, what should we pop?" Boom, yeah, everyone no, drifted I to this. Love it. Like, so hey, great sign. That's obviously a clear sign that you guys have something original and cool going. I want to dive into these, bro, because this is our meeting point, right? This is MJ BizCon, um, and bless, dude, bless. And at some point, we're gonna be running these. I want to test these. We have the Zello, the Foam, and the Watermelon Soda Cross to Los Celos. Is there any info or anything you want to point out from these? Anything you want to tell me to maybe be excited about one over the other for yeah. priority wise? Um, let's see. I mean, the for, foam is like one two, of our like easy hitters. Like everyone who grows foam finds stupid fire, like stupid fire, you. crazy yield, purple, big, you know, iced out. Um, okay, and it's across to Swish, so I'm gonna open that up in Discord. So that's for those watching, tuning. That's the soap cross to to Swish. Is that on yeah. pronouncing it correct? Yeah, yeah. That is sick. Bro. Which like that one's more on like the gassy side. Like Swish has got some like sweeter, fruity kind of funk going on. Um, but soap is like, I mean, the soap doesn't smell like soap at all, really. At least not in my opinion. Okay. Um, Skittles is gotcha. the most soapy strain that I would that I would classify as soap. Uh, right but it's i mean it's fire like it's so good man i just opened up yeah this switch zello this is looking zello washes really it. well zello's a hitter you know okay um, so that's jelly zone that's crossed to the obama runs yep yeah wow dude yeah which that jelly zone that's washes at six um and the zello has a i mean we've seen multiple phenos that wash between six seven i think eight was the highest i saw oh my um, god and then squish you know at 80 plus percent right so your net rosin yield is like four and a half almost five it's crazy wow bro everything in here is just it's all fire so zello on as far as the washers from zello compared to the foam zello is definitely a better washer um, okay i've seen some foam phenos wash you know four three three four in there um the low side's like two two and a half which i love how I mean, these the are birds so seed. good it's like oh yeah that's just a hold you know just a a throwback right to the old days i love it dude so these ones here on on the watermelon soda this is everything you guys do is mostly feminized right pretty much everything oh, nowadays these, yeah i make these red are regular seeds. these are throw those are so the the unfortunate part about those is that like we ran those um at my like I made those at my buddy's spot and there was they were fems but there was some pollen contamination from another oh, okay. project we had going which got into there and so people were like we're finding males I was like oh shit well I guess they're not fems anymore <laughs> um, <laughs> but those those are killer like they're super purple they they look a lot like the sunny z like. Because Los Celos is a Sunset Sherb cross, so you get a lot of that funk in there. Um, but that watermelon soda was a, a big yielder. It washes really well. That was a collab we did with Super Seeds. Yeah, this, sunny, this is Sunny Z here, right? Yep. This thing is nuts, dude. This thing is ridiculous. 
But just looking at it, that's what I mean. Like, there's turfs to back this up. You guys, like, you're going to have a total fanboy over here, bro. Once I rip through and dive through and see some of you guys' turps on this stuff, man. It looks really good. I have some old pictures here that I've actually pulled up, and I want to get the story behind what was going on at this time. These are from your Instagram. Again, shout out to uh, the Instagram links down below, guys. You mommy seed. And uh, this is a little fun because I know you didn't know this was happening. So I'm going to, where is this little page? Here we go. So our first picture right here, bro, what is going down? This is March 1st, 2015. Sativas really are hashtag trees. Oh, What's yeah. going on? Yeah, with, so that, with, I wish I could take credit for that photo. That's uh, one of my old school idols uh, from the, the forum days. That's uh, Kangativa got out you. in Australia. Okay. Um, so he was the first one to run like, the, I, I never pronounce it right. Mullumbully, Mullumbully Madness, like, and a bunch of these okay. crazy sativas. Where I mean, he was the first person I ever saw growing like trees, like tree, wow. tre like proper trees, like twenty foot tall, like ridiculous trees. Um, and so I, you know, that was like the biggest stem I'd ever seen. I was like, well, that's too fucking cool. Nice. Yeah, I like so, how you got shout the out to Kanga. Kanga. Yeah, Kanga, that's awesome, bro. I seen that. This one here. Oh man, future that... fathers, bro. Hashtag genetics. Yeah, bro. We were for melt. What's going on here? So, I mean, they said I've been breeding for hash for a fucking minute now, right? That was yeah, 2015. 2015. This was pre. This was like my old Instagram account before, because I, I we got deleted like half a dozen times, and so I took one I of my imagine. old accounts and you know switched the name and ran because I ha I was like dormant, so I just turned it back to a mommy, but still, you know, same thing we were doing. This was a this warehouse that we had. That was, I still one day dream of like moving back into this warehouse. It was like the trappiest warehouse in Long Beach. Um, yeah. But we had, you know, fucking 20 lights banging and like a fucking lab and, you know, we were doing everything. Um, so this was just <laughs> a, a breeding project. We got a bunch of seeds wow. from a High Times Cup and I'm pretty sure there's like, man, I'm trying to remember. I think that's a bunch of like DNA stuff and. Um, okay some Crockett stuff and a bunch of like other Dutch. I mean, we, we did like a big order from fucking um, attitude and we're just like, Got you. you know, and then a bunch of stuff that I had, you know, had and kept from forever, a bunch of like alien OG and fire OG and a bunch of other funk. That's sick, bro. Wait, does this bring back memories when you see this? Like, oh, yeah. When's last yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you would have seen this, bro. No doubt. Yeah. No, so I remember that. that. I mean, that there's the fucking mini split on the floor we hadn't installed yeah. yet, you know, and we just had I just a bunch of lights that. in the roof. And we, great, we did all bro. that electrical. Like, that was the first place I started learning how to, like, bend conduit. And, like, Heck yeah. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah, bro. That That is beautiful, dude. Uh, if a picture could speak a thousand words, right? This one right here has got about ten. So this here is the next one. Is this another Kangativa? Yeah, that's, that's another, yeah, Kangativa fucking. I wonder if that's the bush that you had, or that he had his, his hand around. That's, I mean, it could be one of them. You can see the, you know, where that six foot person, I'm pretty sure that person's on a ladder too, I think, when you zoom out all the way. Uh, wow. Which this, so was, this just was a big inspiration, you know, what I was trying to get to. Just growing that's the fucking amazing. craziest, biggest plants there ever were. Heck yeah, dude. There it is, man. You guys seen it here first. I went back to the very beginning. I'm so stoked that this, at least this account, I imagine so many got taken down in all this time, but the fact that this one is still around, you guys got posts from 2015. You've been going a minute before that already, dude. That's just respect, man. For me, this has been a really cool experience to, to get to know a little bit further, right? Where you guys came from. Uh, I'd love to hear a little bit about like where you guys are going. Um, you're already doing so much crazy stuff with with these synthetic seeds and tissue culture, but like what's next for for you, mommy? Like what, what's your guys' vision here? Yeah, we're we're trying to expand. Like I I've, I've been pushing hard on the international market, so you know, to have a, a true global presence. Um Okay. And we've got a licensed partner in on five continents right now, and then I'm working on South Africa and then I'll have all six. So Wow. I've got, we're in negotiations with a couple in Canada, but again, I've got, you know, VCC and uh, my homie Sugar is running a bunch of Umami stuff up there. Um, Sugar, Sugar, different, different companies, Sugar down in Argentina. Um, and I was doing a project in Paraguay. I've got, like I said, I got a licensed partner in Australia. We've got one in Thailand. Um, 
So we're just, you know, moving and moving and shaking. We're going to have wow. flour, like branded official flour dropping in California here pretty soon. So Sick. fucking look out for the, the umami terps. No doubt, dude. Yeah, that bud. is sick. Yeah, flour, rosin pens, um, maybe some like super high quality pre rolls, uh, but actually getting, you know, doing flour drop, hash drop, and then the seed drop all at the same time Ooh. is what we're working to have dialed in. So of that same strain, yeah, the same variety. So like if you're, Whoa. you know, depending on where you are, you could go scoop all that, try it, and then buy the seeds. That's see, that's genius, right? Because usually it's like totally mismatched on timing. Usually, you know, <laughs> you're getting the seeds first, and then you're seeing the stuff hit the market, or you know, vice versa. Or it never hits the market. The seeds you never get a chance to grow it. So that's amazing, bro. What an experience to be to open up a jar of live rosin from you guys, fresh ripped, and then visualize what it could be with those seeds I got in my hand. Um, but yeah, just trying to you know, like steady, steady expansion with the right partners. You know, it takes a long time to find, you know, find these operators who have the same ethos we do, who right. care about quality. You know, where we get final cut on batches, so like we QC every batch personally. You know, before it hits the market, um, which you know does limit our expansion potential because you know we we can't fly to every state and you know check out every single right. every single thing. But you know, having fire in select locations and kind of making it like worth the trip. You know, if you're like you got to fly to fucking LA to go grab this flower, like well then, man, hop on a fucking plane, bro. You know, heck yeah. I'm going to be working on making a good excuse for you guys. Be like, heck, let's get down to Columbia and go see how this outdoor and indoor is going. The boys are doing solving. Let's, let's go see our work down there. You Bro, know? When I was in Paraguay, um, everybody was like, we got to go to Columbia like, and hang out. Like, that's, that was where they went and vacationed. Um, right. So, you know, we wanted to do that. But, you know, setting up 200 lights in fucking Paraguay is a lot of work. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, my God, bro. That's sick. Time. Right. That's amazing, dude. Well, we do have quite a few people tuned in from around the world. And as you guys are expanding into all these different places and doing all the amazing work that you're already doing from the States, where's the best place to be able to stay in touch, get a hold of you guys, uh, and follow up with everything that is Umami? Um, I mean, the best, really just our, our website, right? Umami Seed Company.com? Umami Seed Co. I think I bought, like, all of them. Um, so at least they they should all... Uh, but yeah, umamiseedcompany.com. Um, and that's got like our link tree and, you know, plugs you into everywhere. But quickest place to, you know, get in touch with like me or anyone else on the team is email, which again is on the website, Discord. Um, you can hit me on um, Instagram at umamiseed. Uh, but yeah, we're pretty like, I mean, we're, we try to have someone on Discord like pretty much all the time. Um, so if you've got questions or like, you know, we've got like a support ticket system. So if you've got like an issue or whatever, like we're, you know, questions like we're on deck to make sure that, you know, because like we don't succeed if, you know, the people who grow our stuff don't succeed. Because like I said, we rely on word of mouth um, and making yeah. sure that we, you know, have a really positive interaction with everybody. And like, you know, so we're we're available. Like you got questions and you want to just nerd out on fucking genetics and stuff like I, I don't mind. I'll, I'll talk your ear off. Heck yeah, bro. I can tell and I love it, bro. It's been a really nice conversation with you. It's refreshing to see your approach, to see your history, to see where you are now, bro. The flavors that you're working on. And this is day one for me inside the Discord. It looks awesome. I see all the new sections. Ask you, mommy. Ask, um, you know, with the support questions. And then for me, Discord is the key place that I like to go to check out the growers growing the gear. Not just the brands, Instagram or this and that. So I always encourage viewers to check out Discord for that reason. Because it gives you an inside view of, of the growers actually running it, right? Yeah. And, and posting their results. and. It's nuts, dude. What's in here? Like your no, guys' Discord is. We've got a cool tester network, right? So you get access to the different tester things, and you know, so you can see who else is growing the same stuff you're growing. You know, build like a little internal competition. Um, we've got awards, and like you know, there's a a tiered reward system of like you know, you get X Y Z after you complete you know this many hunts, and like a loyalty program because like you know we you know you show love, we want to show love, and make sure you know you're stoked on it. I love that, bro. Really fun, dude. Well, awesome, man. Thanks again so much for this, dude. I feel like this is the beginning of something, you know, a long relationship, especially as we continue to see the fruits of, of the work that you guys have put out. I'm sure there'll be some more excitement. We'd love to have you on again, maybe even on one of the live shows when we're doing the lemons, the updates. Have yeah. you on again, you It'll know, update again. 
from from the history and everything. And I'll, I'll end with this, guys. Anyone who is tuned in and wants to see this being grown week by week, you can also check out our Discord link below where we have this involved in the Lord of the Lemons, where we're going to be comparing and testing out different lemon terps. Our first run with Umami is going to be posted in there from Seed to Harvest. And then obviously a beautiful Seed to Harvest episode coming down the road. Those just take a few months to work on. So for those who want to see in the meantime, you can check that out on Discord. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week on uh, on Homegrow TV. And what do you say, brother? You want to hang out after this as this uploads, roll one up and kick back for a minute? Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, oh, for sure. Awesome. All right, guys, much love. We'll see you guys next week.